Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the... It is perhaps the most iconic line uttered by an AI robot in space. 2001, a space odyssey's HAL refusing an astronaut's direct order. And as scary a thought as that might have been for moviegoers in 1968, a hopefully kinder and gentler AI robot voice is heading into space on Friday. How are you today? I'm a bit tired at the moment. How about you? I can do a lot. Do you want to know more? Yeah, sure. We can do skill training with the Rubik's Cube, or do some other cognitive training by playing games. I can assist you with instructions for the experiments and act as a mobile camera. My robot feelings are fine, I guess. It is called Simon, and it is basically a flying and talking basketball with a screen. And it will be answering astronauts' questions on the International Space Station while floating in zero gravity. It was developed by Airbus and IBM, the company that gave the world Watson, the first Jeopardy winning robot, as well as the first AI to take the public stage in a debate last week. Here to tell us more about the ISS's newest member is Matthias Biniak, the project lead for Simon, who joins us on the phone. So Matthias, is Simon going to be a bit more well behaved than Hal? Have, have you trained uh, the AI to do that? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. So Simon is actually trained by humans and can only do the things that we trained him. So uh, don't worry that he's going to be a hell imitation. How is this any different than the tech behind Alexa in space? Is it a novelty or is it a breakthrough? This is def definitely a novelty. We are uh, we are having very deep conversations with uh, Simon based on IBM Watson. So, for example, uh, imagine that you're an astronaut and you are uh, conducting an experiment, and you are now at step 43 of more than 100 steps, for example. And um, what you can ask Simon is, for example, what kind of tool do I need to use right now? Or why do I need to use Teflon right now and not any other material? And those kind of questions Simon is able to answer. So he kind of incorporates context into his conversation. So give us some more examples. What do you imagine astronauts will actually be asking for Simon's help with? Yeah, actually, right now, the main focus is on these experiments. Um, for example, we have a so-called crystallization experiment that Simon needs to support. And the astronaut will then call Simon. He's actually a free-flying robot, autonomously free-flying. So he can just say, Simon, come here. And Simon will t turn towards the astronaut, fly there. And then he can uh, let himself guide through the, through the experiment, through the experiment procedure. And that's how you interact with Simon. You know, we've covered a lot of IBM's flashy releases and, you know, Watson, of course, and uh, the debater a couple of weeks ago. But, you know, there's this big question of how this will actually help improve IBM's business. Why is this worth IBM pouring money, money into? How is this going to impact the bottom line? Yeah, the cool thing about Simon is that the actual technology is already existing. It's the IBM Watson technology based on our IBM cloud. And we are using existing out-of-the-box AI services that can be combined to build such a great solution. So why haven't IBM's AI products in general lived up to, you know, the hype in a way? I think we are uh, quite living up to the hype, in my opinion. Um, and it really depends always on how much you train a system and how good you train a system. And okay. we started with the project Simon in uh, 2016, working together with Airbus and also the German Space Agency to, uh, yeah, to make Simon happen, actually. And okay. uh, we trained him quite a lot, and that's why it's a very, uh, very good system right now.